you go. It says preparing my life. Yes, it's preparing my live stream for the meeting. <laughs> All right. Uh, Facebook isn't live yet. It does say a show. Oh, okay. One sec. Oh, it went live on Ashish Fernando, not on. Uh, Facebook isn't live yet. It's okay. It does say a show. Oh, okay. One sec. Oh, it went live on Ashish Fernando, not on. Uh, We have echoes now all around. Oh, it went live on Ashish Fernando. We have echoes now all around. Okay. I'm going to switch this one off. All right, guys. Let's see if the echo has stopped. Yes. No, it hasn't. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. This is crazy. Hey, people on Instagram. Yes, you can start asking me questions now. I already have a bunch of questions here. I'm going to start answering these questions uh, while I'm also trying to fix YouTube. Yeah, so that we don't waste any time. So let's do this. Okay. Uh, yes. Please take me along the live. No, that's not happening yet. Wait. Otherwise, everybody is going to want to come live. So for now, we're just going to answer some questions. Okay. Okay, let's scroll up. I have some questions that you guys sent uh, on the on the channels. So before I go to that, I want to make sure I haven't missed any question from here. Okay, 25 of you joined, that's awesome. Wharton Business School provides scholarship or not? Okay, so the Wharton, this is a question from Sharma4123. Okay, so the Wharton School is, is a very, um, it's a finance focused institution. So if you are a finance professional, you have about four or five years of experience in the financial industry, uh, in management, um then yes there is a chance to get a scholarship at the wharton school of business but uh, you know kid me not the competition for wharton is insane you know that it's the number one school in the world so uh, you know it it gets a little difficult when you apply there with just a few years of work ex and um, uh, you know no finance background when I say finance, investments also count, okay, Sharma? So um, I don't know if you are connected with the ISC team, but if you are, they will help out in understanding what Wharton really needs. Um, I have a few friends, uh, uh, one of my friends, uh, uh, Ada, she works at CVS Pharmacy. She heads their entire finance department uh, for the Massachusetts state. Uh, she's a recent Wharton graduate, so learn a lot from her. Okay, uh, right, no, no other questions on Insta. Okay, we have a bunch coming in uh, on YouTube and I'm gonna go through that a little bit. Dhruv says, hi, I wish to, wish to get into Stanford. So help me out. Dhruv, it will help to understand uh, what your background is just at a high level what what you've studied how many years of work ex you have because uh, that's a very broad question get into stanford again top school in the country right west coast which um, is very climate friendly and indian students love going to the west coast because of the sun and the sand and the beaches so um, yeah all right so while you post some of the, those answers dhruv we're going to look at another one 
Okay, guys, we're jumping right into questions here because I don't want to waste time. But let me now say hi to all of you. Thank you for joining. Uh, we have people on Instagram and we have people now joining in. YouTube's numbers are going up because we went live a little late. Sorry about that. We have 25 people on Instagram. Uh, so great. Um, yeah, this is, I would say I've, I've done one or two uh, go live sessions. This is um, probably the third. And so I'm facing a lot of uh, tech issues here, but uh, this seems to be working fine, right? Okay. So, all right. Trying to answer questions. Sudhan, okay, Sudhan says, hi, hope you're doing good. Yes, I am. Thank you so much for asking. I've kind of uh, quarantined myself in the house for the last, what now, it's been a month and a half and I haven't traveled at all. Usually I'm, I'm on a flight at least once a week, me trying to go meet uh, some institution, trying to meet customers. But COVID has actually helped me, right? And I'm just taking a break, but I'm trying to do everything online as much as possible. So it's great. Oh, you know what? Let me shift this a little bit so that you see the India flag. I purposely put it there because this is a very India focused uh, go live, right? And uh, that's what I wore at Bentley during my graduation. So uh, here in the US, when you graduate, you have to wear the graduation gown, right? And the graduation cap. And then Bentley does this amazing thing where they actually, based on your country of origin, they give you this, uh, I don't know what you call it, but you kind of put it around your neck. And on one side it says Bentley and on the other side, it's actually the flag of your country because it's a proud moment for you, right? Like, so for me, coming from India, you know, getting my MBA here on a full scholarship, uh, it was really, it was quite a big deal. It was a surreal moment. So, uh, wow, thank you for all the hearts on Insta, people. Okay, so uh, coming back to Sudanji, uh, could you tell us about the scope of business analytics and management science post-COVID? Is it worth doing a study in September 2020 in the UK? Yeah, so September 2020 is... Um, I mean, it's hard to say what's gonna happen in September, 2020, right? Because right now, no one knows where we're gonna go with, with COVID. And, uh, and that's why I think you have to be a little cautious when you think about September, 2020. Um, there are schools in the UK, Sudan, who have now opened up to deferrals, okay? What do you mean by deferrals? So, Essentially, if you apply for a business analytics or a management science or any program that allows deferral, then they will give you an admit now. And then based on where the COVID situation goes, they will actually defer, which means they'll say, it's okay, Sudan, you have the admit and you can even come next year, right? We are not gonna interview you again. We're not gonna take you through the application process but you already have an admit. And uh, that's an, an amazing thing, right? So scope for business analytics and management science, quick and short answer for business analytics, yes. In fact, there's gonna be more and more scope post COVID for you to do business analytics, right? Cause now business are just gonna run helter skelter on how to analyze the data from 2020 and how to make great business decisions. So if you think of it from that angle, yes, there is a lot of scope. Management science, again, a lot of people confuse management science with an MBA. I can have a whole different webinar just on that. Uh, but short answer is try for a management program which has business administration part of it. Uh, management science typically comes across as a short version of the MBA and, and it's going to be hard, I must say, right? Okay. Uh, pros, Dhruv is asking about the process post coronavirus. Yes, this is a question a lot of you have. Uh, so I will, I will go through that in a moment. Um, 
remember the story if possible is one of the users and the question is is undergrad even better or preferred in the us if we are able to convert the uh, the really good institutions such as iim indore uh program okay okay my guess is uh your question is about iim indore versus programs in the us it's a decision that you have to take um and it's a hard one right so of course undergrad in the us is starting to pick up a lot of pace for indian students right so if you think of it till now till about 5 years ago indian students coming to the us were very focused on masters programs so the the you know the thought process in india is that i will save money while doing undergrad in india and then i go and do my masters in the us i spend two years worth of money time and effort and then i'll get a good job now that has started shifting because people have realized that if you go for undergrad then you of course get scholarships for undergrad but then if you do your undergrad in the us you automatically qualify for higher ranked institutions in the us because simply because you are not going to be compared against an indian student right there's a lot of competition in india so when you do your undergrad in the us you are now automatically compared against only us students who are coming in right and that makes a big difference okay all right my computer is giving me trouble now it's not really uh, charging so let me see what i can do here these work god okay all right give me a second guys just trying to fix this technology is just so crazy right I might have to get my charger guys give me one second okay Let's see, this one works. Luckily, I have a spare Mac charger, so I'm going to try that. Yes, it works. That's awesome. Okay, so all right, let's go to more questions. Uh, Okay, I have done. Subhash is saying I have done my MBA in India, and I need to work in America. Yes. Uh, so Subhash, this is where uh, the concept of H one B comes in. Uh, so you have to read more about that. Again, huge, huge topic of discussion. I have gone through uh, the same visa process myself. Right. I did my F one uh, when I came in as a student, then my H one, uh, then a green card, but. um it's really hard for you to study somewhere else and get a job in the us right uh, there's only there's there's a few ways to do it one is you're working for a company in india that then sends you to the us it does your h1b right or it does your l1 these are two visa categories that companies outside of the us can do for their employees right so if you're working there you get a project for the us then they will do that visa for you and your chances of getting accepted are of course they're part of a lottery uh, system and say you get accepted right then you come here as part of that company's visa and now you have an opportunity to transfer 
that visa, that H-1B from that company to a local American company, okay? But the other option, if you don't have a local Indian company that's, okay, I'm trying to wave to as many people as I can. Uh, if you don't have that option, if you come here, uh, if you wanna come here, then it's really hard. Why? I'll tell you. Because even if a company in the US likes your profile and you're Indian, right? they have to wait till april 1st because april 1st is the only that the date when you can companies can start applying for h1b visas okay so say you found a company that likes you uh, your profile in august they will literally have to wait till april of next year apply for your work visa and then wait another 6 months to see if you actually get the visa and then you can travel Plus, in that time frame, they also have to justify to the government that your profile is better than local American profiles. So you just imagine the crazy amount of work that they have to go through. So they typically don't do that, even though there is an option. Okay, that's my humble opinion. Okay, uh, let's go to a question from YouTube now. Anjali is asking, uh, is, she, is saying I'm an incoming freshman my university will offer remote only classes without any reduction in tuition fee. If I'm unable to get my visa and make it to the US, any advice on what I should do? Yes. So Anjali, this is a good question. And this is where you have to definitely connect with the admissions office of your university, right? Uh, one of the things that a lot of our partner universities are doing at iSchool Connect is they are giving the exact same uh, method of learning, which is no reduction, but go online, take remote classes, but then it's contingent to the visa, right? So if you don't get a visa, when you actually apply for one, they will wait for a certain period and they will say, okay, Anjali, why don't you apply again? If you apply again and you again get rejected, then you can get the full money refunded, okay? So uh, that's an important piece that you have to know, right? Because see, typically, if you're applying to a school in a non-COVID situation, you will apply, you will get your visa, right? And if, if, you, if you get rejected, then you don't have to pay for your tuition fee, right? So schools will do that, okay? So please talk to them, send them an email. I know that's how it works, okay? Okay, guys, so uh, coming back here, Nikunj, best university for physics. Oh, there's a ton of them, uh, Nikunj. I mean, uh, don't just go by rankings, okay? And I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the US. Don't go by just rankings. There's a lot of schools where most of the physics Nobel laureates have come out of, like, you know, Stanford Berkeley is actually very good as well for physics. But you have to think through a lot of different things, your profile, whether it's the right fit, which region, which state you want to study in. There's a lot that goes into saying which is the best university for you, right? Also, whether you want to go into research in physics or you want to actually work for a company being a physicist, those are things you have to consider. So I would say it's not an easy answer, uh, but we can talk about that pretty soon. All right, cool. Um, question from YouTube now. Oh, wow, it just resets. <laughs> Prasang is saying, please say hi, Prasang. Hi, Prasang. Yes, this is a real video and it's a real person. It's not recorded, okay? <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Anjali, you're not allowed to defer. I get it. Um, it's a choice that universities are making, uh, whether they want to allow students to defer or not. But if they don't defer it, then there needs to be a money back guarantee. That's basically it, right? Okay. Um, Dhruv is asking questions about scholarships. Wish to be a bachelor in computer science. There's a, to be honest, Dhruv, there's very less scholarships for bachelors in computer science, uh, but they are available, I must say. So uh, it's, uh, it, it's something that, you know, you should talk to any of your counselors or, or someone at iSchool Connect about and we can definitely help, okay? Uh, okay. 
Subhash, what are the ways to get a job in America? Wow. That's uh, even one more webinar is not enough to answer that question, Subhash. What, what are the ways to get a job in America? There's just so many different ways. The easiest way for you to know how you can get jobs in America is search on, uh, well, of course, we have the iSchool Connect blog. So go to iSchoolConnect.com slash blog and look at all the job opportunity related uh, blogs. Just search for it. Okay. But also the easier way for you to look at it is visas, right? So go to the list of visas in the US. You will see all the categories of visa related to study, related to visiting US, and then relating to job. Okay. And those are the visas where you can, um, that's, those are the ways in which you can work. So some things that you will miss is uh, like, okay, I, first I'll tell you what you will find there. You'll find H1B, H1A, L1, L2, uh, you'll find J1, like all these are visas and they allow you to work in the US in different ways and forms. What you might miss out in that list is You'll see that it says F1 visa for students, but there is a catch. You can have an F1 student visa and you can have something called CPT, okay? Once you come here as a student on an F1, then you apply for CPT or curricular practical training, right? What that says is while you are studying here, you can also work for 20 to 40 hours a week that time frame depends on your institution where you're studying, right? So if the university or the school or the college lets you work for 20 hours as a student through the CPD program, you can actually work while you're studying, which is a great option. I never had it, how I wish I had it at Bentley, but also mine was a 10 month MBA. So it was a very packed schedule. So they didn't even allow me to do CPD, right? Which is fine. Uh, okay. Suresh says hello. Hi. Uh, Janki, computer science, bachelor's along, uh, just as same as Dhruv. Uh, guys, computer science is never going to die, especially in the US, right? Uh, they depend on international uh, experts for computer science, right? Uh, so there's always going to be demand, whatever you see in the news and all these things about jobs not available. And remember when this whole global crisis dies down and jobs are back, guess who's gonna get the computer science related jobs? You think Americans? No, like they are, Americans are really good at sales and marketing. So that's their key focus areas, right? They're good at finance also, uh, but IT related jobs is, it typically goes to Indians and Chinese. So uh, they, there's going to be no choice for US companies but to hire more uh, internationals from India and China because that's the supply, right? Okay. Pratik Bal, I'm going to wave to you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. How about scholarship in NUS? Priya is asking. Uh, scholarships in NUS for MBA healthcare administration. Uh, NUS, as far as I know, I think I was checking N NUS a few days back. Till now, they have not released any circular on scholarships, Priya. Uh, a lot of schools are doing this. Uh, all right, Sriram, hi. Uh, thanks for watching. A lot of schools are doing this, uh, that because of COVID, they are actually discounting their fees. So it's not even a scholarship. It's, you can think of it as a scholarship, but they're saying, hey, you know, if you apply for our program this year because of COVID and because of all these craziness, then we actually will just give you a 30 or 40% discount on the fees. Uh, and it applies to all students, right? Isn't that great? NUS hasn't said anything of that sort. And typically for MBA healthcare, they do give 30 to 40% scholarships based on your profile, right? So if you have been working at a pharma company and if you if you have been working somewhere in a business profile nus will definitely uh consider that right so when i applied eight years ago wow long time um uh, nus uh 
did give me a provisional admit uh, contingent to me doing another year of um, of having another year of work experience, right? So they did give me a deferred admission. I didn't take it obviously, and I did not get any scholarship because I was not even at par. I think I was below par on how much work X and everything they needed. Right? Okay, so let's do this. Let's take some questions from YouTube. Uh, okay. Wow, guys, there's a whole ton of questions. I'm going to start from the bottom, okay? So, okay, there you go. Um, tips for average student who was studying fourth year production engineering with history of careers. I'm a student, my dream is... Uh, it's okay to be an average student. Uh, I know a lot of you might be saying, oh, my profile may not fit and, and, and all of that stuff. But remember guys that uh, in the US, there's more than 4,500 universities, right? Or institutions granting a degree. And there's a place for everybody, okay? You may not of course qualify for the top 20 or something, but it doesn't matter. Like you have to make a choice, okay? So I, for instance, I had good grades, I still did not go for the top 20. I did get an admit from Yale. I did not take it because I went for a lower ranked institution so that I could get more scholarship, right? So at a lower ranked institution, I was in the cream of students who applied and I got a 100% scholarship. Nobody thinks of these little nuances, but just imagine even if you get 10, 20,000 US dollars off of your study, oh man, that's, that's huge, right? Okay, so, all right. So, few questions now coming. I'm gonna just cover all of the countries together now, right? So there's a, a lot of questions around US and UK and Australia and New Zealand. So let me just talk about that a little bit all together, okay? I know Sarthak, you're asking, is Canada a better option because US citizenship is becoming impossible? So let's talk about that for a bit. Uh, the US, yes, it is becoming difficult to get in and it, it's a variety of reasons. It's partially because of how the immigration policy is being done. It's also partially because of how the administration thinks about jobs, right? So just, just imagine, the unemployment rate in the US went up from about close to 5%. It's now close to 14% because of COVID. Uh, so it doesn't just apply to the US. All countries think about it. They will always worry about how do we decrease the unemployment rate. And typically the first, uh, first group of people that gets hit are international immigrants, right? Uh, but also what you have to understand is that the US is by far the country taking the biggest number of international students, okay? So even if the US says from tomorrow, we are not gonna take half of the people, it's still gonna remain the top country for taking people, okay? I know it might have confused some people, but just understand that point that only half of how many students come to the US go to Canada, okay? Uh, now talking about those other countries, Canada is uh, by far the country that's most welcoming to students. Even with COVID, they have opened up all of their um, uh, visa offices. They're taking in students. They are also saying that we will give scholarships and they are also almost confident that they're gonna reopen their schools and colleges in July, right? Now they're taking a big bet. The world does not know where the COVID situation is gonna go. But if you ask me, hey Ashish, should we consider other countries uh, than the US for now? My answer is yes, you should. You should look at um, what they have to offer. New Zealand, uh, my team was telling me that New Zealand recently announced that they might be very soon opening up their visa offices, right? The consulates. So if that's the case, then New Zealand is definitely on the cards as well, right? The US, my assumption and my prediction is that the US consulates are gonna open 
the last okay because the us is very uh, they have a very very high standard for security and healthcare and all of those things so they try to live up to that standard right so they're going to wait to see what other countries are doing so if you guys are looking to study this year canada australia and even uk is not a bad option okay so if you don't know the uk last year wow so many hearts thank you everybody the uk last year announced that they're going to give every international student a two year post study work permit right so till last year it was only one year now they've moved it to two years okay which is actually one of the highest across the globe what that means is when you study in the uk even if you don't have a job you can stay there find a job you have a two year window okay um and that's amazing right uh in the us also there are some amazing cool things like if you're a stem student we'll do a different video on that then you can get 3 years of opt which is you don't need a work visa for 3 years okay but uh, there's a lot of questions to be answered so uh at a high level look at australia look at uk look at new zealand keep your mind open okay yes the us has uh, the highest number of students coming in yes the us has the highest average income and all of that but the us is the least flexible in this situation with covid and with all the protests that are going on i'm sure you guys are seeing i don't want this video to be negative so i'm not going to talk about that a lot but in all of this situation it might be a better option to go there right okay uh, dhruv i i'm seeing a lot of your questions i'm going to skip that for now okay no hard feelings uh, if there's some uh, something that i really have to specifically answer i will uh, but i want to give a chance for other people also to ask um Myra should i postpone my plans for masters or apply to universities now a lot i i see quite a few people asking that question even on insta um my answer is don't postpone guys apply this year i'll tell you why because just like you are facing all this dilemma you are facing a, a question of should i spend my money what should i do on the other side the university is facing issues too if they are not getting enough students they are going to give out offers okay you want to take that offer okay so myra if they're saying that students apply you don't have to pay us anything just give us a 500 dollar deposit if covid is still there this year your admit is still confirmed for next year what's wrong and if they say okay if you don't want to come next year we also give you $500 back why would you not take it take it guys take all of the offers okay this is the time when there is crisis companies including institutions who have a product to offer they will give discounts on the product right i'm sure in india when you're buying stuff in india right now you're seeing discounts there right same here a a program is a product right they're selling some service some product to you and you're paying for it they are going to put offers on it they've already started okay we will uh, I, i'll definitely try and post some links to institutions that are waving off scores M money talks 1 billion i don't know what your real name is but you're asking you know what are the universities canceling sat there are universities canceling sat gre gmat requirements take take advantage of all of that okay imagine there are schools saying we don't need gre score we just need your profile we don't even want you to say you're coming this year we can defer it to next year here's 30% discount on fees take it guys take it i would say being you typically the best time to apply is now okay uh unless the school is not flexible then don't but try of course okay uh janki school approached me <laughs> you see janki saying that the school approached her for some things like that's what they do they are they are they have a product that they need to fill seats for uh, otherwise they're not going to survive uh matati during this pandemic is it useful for students to study abroad i answered that question uh, which exam did you write to get scholarship vinit is asking there's no particular exam for scholarships of course there are some types of scholarships 
uh, you will get that list also on the iSchool Connect blog. But uh, Vineet, there are uh, a lot of merit and need-based scholarships, okay? For which you will typically submit an application along with your regular admission application, okay? There will be a scholarship form that you fill. In my case, they didn't even need that, okay? So when I was talking to them, when I was in the interview, I said, this is my need. Hey, I have a good profile. I have admits from three other schools. You've got a bargain, okay? you got to do that stuff. You should apply to five or six institutions. You should get an admit from one place. Go and tell the other school that you have an admit. And it's completely fair. They want to give you a better deal compared to another institution, which is actually their competitor. If you think of it, institutions are like competitors. They want the best and brightest students for themselves. So they're going to give you scholarships. They're going to give you whatever they can in their capacity to get you as a student, okay? So just make use of that, guys, okay? Ritika is asking, what am I doing? <laughs> Ritika, it's, uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, iSchool Connect is, is, uh, is what I launched. Uh, so I'm helping students through that. I also work uh, for a company and uh, it's, uh, it's been very powerful to just help students out. Uh, that's, that's kind of uh, what I love doing. Okay, and uh, yes, so let's move on. Uh, okay. Saxena, are German degrees accepted in the US? Yes, yes, of course they are. Uh, Nikunj, how to get a 100% scholarship in colleges like MIT? It's hard to get 100% at MIT unless you have something crazy, like you have a patent under your name or, or you, you know, you've done something that's really outstanding in nature. MIT doesn't really need to give scholarships. You should understand that schools give scholarships only when they don't really have a huge application pool of really smart and bright students. MIT already gets that and students are ready to pay for that, right? So they don't give so many scholarships. Right time to apply for fall, one she's asking. The right time to apply for any cycle is one year before that cycle. Shocked? Yes. <laughs> it is one year before that cycle. Uh, I'm sure there's a blog on that as well that we've made on our on iSchoolConnect.com. But um, I, it takes time. Researching programs, completing your applications, making sure your documents are in place. A lot of students I see uh, in on their birth certificate, they don't have their own name, right? Because their parents did not name them while when they were born it took a few days so the birth certificate has a blank now you need to get an affidavit there's a lot of things that you have to do right apply for scholarships hunt program to program comparison so don't wait till the end yeah uh Ka Ka janki says canis is asking me for my i'm guessing this is kansas are uh, you're talking about the university uh is asking for passport which you don't have you need to have a passport, okay? It's important. You can get a, an admit, uh, but it will be, again, uh, you can tell them that I don't have a passport, but I can give you some other government approved ID and your admission will be contingent to whether you get the passport or not, okay? The passport is the only globally recognized nationally issued document, okay? So guys, all those of you who don't have a passport, even if you're not applying for uh, school this year or maybe you're not applying anywhere, get it, okay? Internationally, that's the only document that counts. So get it. Uh, okay, we have to move. A lot of people waving, thank you. Hi, Anirudh. Okay, is there, uh, okay. Let's move down. God, so many questions, guys. I'm going to try and answer a lot of these as we go, okay? Um, ASU or SG, SJSU for undergrad in computer science, Atharva is asking. Uh, Atharva, um, honestly, I would say it depends on what you want. So if you are entrepreneurial in nature, you want to work for startups, you want to do, you know, next-gen cutting-edge IT, then Arizona State University, ASU is your place to go, okay? Arizona State University itself 
is a venture capital firm. Isn't that cool? I don't know if you understand that term, but Arizona State University every year gives money, okay, to its students who have an idea that they have prototyped and it mostly happens in the field of computer science. So you can prototype an idea, you can apply for the Arizona State University funding, they will fund you and they will help you start a company. It's amazing. SJSU doesn't have that. SJSU also is pretty much like studying in India, okay? Uh, it's, it's mostly gonna be Indian students in the class, very less diversity. Arizona State also has a lot of uh, students, but uh, there's still some diversity there, okay? That would be my short answer for you, okay? Uh, all right. Uh, MBA in Canada, Kangsha is asking. So MBA in Canada is, uh, uh, I would say it's slightly below par compared to countries like US and UK, but it's picking up pace. So if you get a good school in Canada, like you get, McGill, McMaster, like some of the good institutions in Canada, your MBA is worth a ton, even outside of Canada, okay? So uh, one thing to note is that a lot of companies are now setting up their shop in Toronto, Canada, okay? So Google just set up its, uh, its new facility in Toronto. Microsoft is going there. Amazon is going there. So if you want to be in the in and around Toronto, uh, it's great. The next after Toronto is going to be Vancouver in British Columbia, which is extreme uh, west of Canada, right? Canada is a huge country. It's wide. So these are the two, I would say, uh, Toronto is east and uh, Vancouver is west and um, everything in the middle, you want to try and avoid, okay? That's how I would put it. Uh, but yes, definitely, okay? Uh, right. Let's scroll a little bit. Um, Pradyuti is asking a wonderful question. What do you think is the best option, like applying for community college at first and then transfer to university? Guys, this is one of the hidden ways of actually getting the biggest bang for your buck, okay? So Pradyuti, thank you for asking that question. Uh, typically what happens is that uh, when you apply for community college, Indian students tend, and parents tend to think that community college, ye kya hota hai, right? Like what, it even doesn't sound right. No, but community colleges are, because they are typically funded by states and by the federal government, the fees are very low, okay? You may not have the best classmates, like, you know, like you may not have a power pack uh, class of people, but it doesn't matter. It's going to cost you less than 50, 60% of what you would pay to a university. And how you do it is you do one year of community college, okay? And then every community college will have statistics, okay? So if you go to say, you know, in Boston, there's the uh, Bunker Hill Community College. You go there and they will have partnerships with universities. So if you go to Bunker Hill Community College, you can transfer to Boston University or some, I think even Harvard is on the list very easily in your second year, okay? And you will become a normal undergrad or grad student. Okay, this typically works in the undergrad uh, field. You do first year or two years at a community college, you save a ton of money. Community colleges even allow you to work outside and then you are favored compared to any other student who's applying directly from India or directly from any other place. You will be favored because that community college is connected to the larger institution, okay? And your transfer, it's, it's technically called a credit transfer your credits from the community college will transfer to the university and your chances of an admit go up. It's a great way to do things, okay? So talk to, um, talk to us for sure if uh, you want more information on that, okay? Um, Aditya saying, congrats on your successful career. Thank you, Aditya. 
uh, still a lot more to go in my life, uh, but we'll see where I head. Uh, could you please add me on LinkedIn uh, and guide me how to apply for jobs? Yes, I, I, I will try. The thing is uh, with LinkedIn, I try to keep, uh, I try to keep just LinkedIn away from social media. So my apologies, I, I know I have a ton of requests on LinkedIn, which I haven't accepted, but there's a reason for that. I wanna make sure that uh, on LinkedIn, uh, I, I keep it uh, just to myself and I'm just being very honest with you guys, right? And I hope you appreciate it. Facebook and uh, YouTube and Instagram is where I want to make sure it's a very social interaction. Uh, LinkedIn, what happens, I initially started doing uh, social activities on LinkedIn as well. But then sometimes because there's so many messages coming in, like an important message from a colleague or a partner or someone gets missed out. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was actually uh, causing a lot of issues. So that's when I decided to split it out. Um, so I hope you guys understand, but thank you. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. It's just, okay. I'm going to the bottom now. Uh, where are you now in America or India? I'm in the U S right now. Uh, Himlata, I, I am in Boston. This is where I live. It's been about eight years that uh, I am uh, I'm working and living in Boston. The beautiful place gets really cold in the winter and it goes to minus 30 degrees sometimes. Yes. And every year on an average, it, it goes down to uh, uh, about <laughs> minus 10 or something. Okay. Uh, Kaushik, yes, I do speak Tamil. Uh, I am a Tamilian at heart and also by birth, I am a Tamilian. Uh, so yes, non Tamil nalla pesna. Okay, uh, I haven't forgotten that. Yes, uh, Al Alish Bhai is saying thank you for the guidelines. Um, my pleasure, Alish Bhai. It's it's my job to help all of you folks. So uh, yes, um, Surya is sending a request to be live on the video. Unfortunately, we're not going to make that happen today. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, uh, birth state, <laughs> my birth state is Tamil Nadu. Uh, okay, if that was of importance. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, I also wanna say now we're almost going to the end. We are, we are reaching the one hour mark. So guys, I wanna say that um, even though my channel is called Global Survival Guide, uh, there is another channel um, which, which our team runs and it's called iSchool Connect, okay? Uh, I, the letter I for India, I guess, <laughs> schoolconnect.com, right? You should reach out there. You, should re you can reach out to me directly on the Global Survival Guide channel as well and on Instagram as well. Um, it, I tend to get a ton of messages, so we will try our best. Uh, to answer as much as possible. But if you register on iSchoolConnect.com, then the response to you is, is gonna be much faster. There's a ton of stuff that we do for free, okay? So all the blogs are free, the discussion forum is free, talking to our consultants is free because uh, we launched iSchool Connect with the sole purpose and vision to help students answer these kind of questions, right? So I wanna make sure that you all have a place to go to where you feel safe, where you feel heard. And uh, I am trying my level best. I'll be doing a few more live sessions because I'm seeing so many mm -hmm. questions come in. Um, so, sorry, I got a call there. My live video got paused. Uh, so we will, we will definitely do that, okay? <laughs> Shamla put a big red dot uh, so that she gets attention. Okay, let's look at that. Shamla is saying, please, please, which do you have better scope in architecture, dental, engineering? Okay, these are completely, well, architecture, engineering sort of are related. Dental is completely outside, right, Shamla? But uh, if you don't really worry about how much you're going to spend, then dental science is uh, definitely worth it because post-study, uh, dental science has just tremendous, Curious job opportunities. Okay, 
uh, people eat a lot of sugar in the US, the highest consumption of sugar. So cavities, root canal, all the time, right? That's, I'm just, it's just saying that, but you get my point. Uh, architecture, engineering depends what you want. I mean, if it's computer science, computer engineering, uh, genetic engineering, molecular engineering, high demand, great stuff. Architecture is a little hard, okay? It's tough, I must say that, okay? Um, okay, I, we just posted, uh, I just posted on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can reach out at that email ID, hello at iSchoolConnect.com as well, if you have more questions. Okay, thank you for all the love you guys are showering on Instagram. This is fun, guys. Oh, God. I'm going to do this more. I'm just loving it. Uh, Okay, Amber is saying, take people on live. It could be a good interaction. Amber, I so want to do it, but the problem is that there's uh, almost 10, 12 people wanting to go live. So I just want to make sure that it doesn't become a conversation about just one person. I want to keep it for everybody, right? So that's the reason I'm not doing it. I think as time goes by, we will, uh, we will make provisions for that to happen, okay? Uh, Yash, what do you think of Halt University for MBA. I got a call for intake. Guys, um, I, I, I don't want to demean any university, but universities like Halt will definitely, they have this huge list of emails. They will contact everybody possible. Be very careful, okay? Uh, Halt is not really ranked. Uh, they have um, operations, they have facilities across the globe, right? I think there's Singapore, Shanghai, uh, there's Boston, there's a few more, Dubai, right? But um, you know, you may not get the full experience that you want. Okay, uh, so be very careful about uh, choosing Hull. Uh, my initial recommendation would be that if you have a profile that's qualified for a higher ranked school, yes, that's what you should go for. Okay, uh, so very important. Amrev, thank you for joining. I, you say take care. That's uh, you guys also take care. Um, okay, bad man Zach is asking, uh, can you explain documents needed and the step-by-step -step process? So there's a, a blog post specifically on that, Zach, and you should go, go through that on iSchoolConnect.com slash Zach, uh, <laughs> slash blog. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of information there because it's, uh, it, 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 there's a lot of documents to be done, right? So it's, it's important. Um, okay. Uh, Aditya Rai, PR for me and my mother. Canada, best place to go. Uh, getting a PR easy if you qualify with the point system. Australia comes next, also easy. If you qualify on the point system for PR, US hardest ever because especially for Indians, Mexicans and Chinese uh, people, nationals, uh, the wait time is insane. Right now, people who applied in 2017 for a green card or a PR, that's the PR version of the US, they are now being looked at, right? So when I say even looked at, it typically takes 11 to 12 years to get a US green card. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's worth it. That's why everybody applies to this one, right? Uh, okay. Um, Hema, public versus private. Public sounds bad, right? Because of maybe our Indian connotation of what public schools and universities and institutions mean. Public universities have the biggest bang for the buck, guys, okay? University of Massachusetts, Amherst, great public school, uh, great for computer science, known for machine learning and artificial intelligence funded by the state, amazing, amazing uh, job opportunities. I know students who went to University of Massachusetts at Amherst and are now working on the Google Brain team, okay? That's the most powerful AI team in the world. Um, okay. Uh, tips on student visas, Nikhil. I've made a separate video. It's actually a two-part video. You should look at it on my YouTube channel on Global Survival Guide. Uh, there's a video on that, okay? But uh, yeah, visa is uh, is a whole different process. It's iSchool Connect, by the way, we've built an AI that can train you for visa interviews. It's, it asks you questions, looks for body language and, and all of that. So some really powerful stuff 
uh, once you subscribe as a student on ISC. Okay. Uh, all right. So our live video on Instagram has ended and we had 155 people who viewed the video. That's awesome. Uh, okay. And then uh, it's time for us to do the same on YouTube as well, guys. Okay. Uh, Himlata, I studied at uh, Bentley University in Boston. Uh, it's a really pretty little university, very little known outside of the U.S., but you know that's these are the kind of things you guys should find okay is uh, where do i get most bang for my buck where other people around me are not looking at okay um can i work in the us with uk degree yes you can for sure do that okay um best countries to do mba uk uh, us come first australia canada not so much imad uh nikhil what you watch the us visa tips perfect uh does canada offer higher scholarships than us for undergrad no the us by far will offer the highest amount of scholarships nishita right so uh it's uh, it's something to look at do colleges have sibling discount <laughs> even asking such a uh, funny question <laughs> but yes no it's uh, i'm sorry it's a serious question uh what you can do is if you uh if you ha have applied gone there you want your sibling to come in you walk in to that admissions office yourself and you say hey i'm a student what can you do for my brother my sister my cousin they will do something for you for sure because they appreciate the fact that you chose them and you are referring someone okay um good university for ms and cs kaushik huge huge question go to ischoolconnect.com slash explore schools put in your filters look at all the computer science programs it's all for free you don't even have to sign in uh, you can filter it down okay uh, does canada offer high scholarships than us for ug studies oh, man. okay we answered that uh, yes, Dhruv, I will be conducting another live video soon. I want to do something next week again. So I will definitely, definitely try. Mm. Tom has just completed 12th standard, want to study international law. Can I study for free? Oh, wow. So law is, uh, first of all, the question you have to answer, Tom, is are you going to go back? Because when you study law here, it's going to be US law. So going back to India, this law degree may not fully apply unless you are working for a corporation that deals with U.S. legality. OK, so you have to make that decision. Getting a scholarship full ride is hard. Partial scholarships. Yes. Available. OK, um, Dhruv, I will be more prepared with questions. Sure, Dhruv. Yes. Uh, OK, wow. As a, Look at Sudan is desperate, posting the same question five times. Okay, fine, let's answer that. Can you tell about worth of degree from a Russell group in university in UK? Uh, Sudan, I'll be very honest with you. I haven't really uh, researched uh, those Russell group universities in, uh, in much detail. So I will definitely try and do that and, and send you my response, okay? Um, okay. Uh, Hey, Malata, I have a twin. Uh, hey, okay, what, what's that? You, you're sending, uh, you're saying, please sending hearts for what? Maybe I missed a question from you there, right? I'm sorry, there's just so many questions coming in, guys. Okay, New Zealand for doing MBA, Imad, not a great option, I must say. Opportunities are less. MBA is something that typically, uh, you know, they, they go for local uh, applicants. So, yes. So guys, unfortunately, we've crossed the time. I have to stop right now, okay? But thank you so much for joining. Thank you for the 23 likes and zero dislikes, which basically means that I need to do this more often, okay? Which I will, all right? But I've given you all the different ways to reach out. There's the Global Survival Guide channel, but there's also ischoolconnect.com, okay? Go there, register, get a ton of stuff for free. There's a recommendation engine that uses AI to look at your profile and give you the right institutions by country. Use that, okay? Talk to our teams as needed. Also, reach out at hello at ischoolconnect.com. Uh, I send that uh, email ID to you. But 
uh, it's been a pleasure, okay? It just gives me more and more uh, confidence when I talk to you, I get all these questions and I get all your likes, uh, honestly, and no dislikes. It tells me that I'm doing something right. So um, it's my pleasure, okay? And we are all family, so stay safe. It's a hard time for the whole world, okay? But if you noticed, I did not talk about the negative things going on because, you know, as humans, we try to always say, oh, this is bad and that is bad and what do I do now? Don't, okay? Look for the positives. Look for the silver lining, okay? When there's such situations going on, you can actually benefit from it. You can get higher scholarships. You can get better deals. So just look at all of that, okay? And it's very important. Shamla and others, please, I, 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 I'm really sorry. I'm not able to take more questions, uh, but I will, of course, do a, a, another live session pretty soon, okay, with my team, and we will definitely answer those questions. So thank you so much. Thank you for all the love you guys have shown me over the last months, year or so. Uh, hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Okay.